Welcome back to another episode of Spotlight on the Arts, the show brought to you by the Chicopee Cultural Council and Chicopee TV. I'm Johnny Miranda, your host for the evening, and today we have an amazing show. We have Mike Medeiros from 50 Arrow Gallery in East Hampton and from Poesia Pottery in Florence, Northampton. So stay tuned and enjoy the show. And here we are with Mike Medeiro from Poesia Gallery in Florence, who is also exhibiting at 50 Arrow Gallery in East Hampton and does some work for East Hampton Works. So let's welcome, and thanks for being here, Mike Medeiro. How are you, Mike? I'm doing good. Thank you for Thank having you me. Thank you for being here. Yeah. It's nice to see a uh, different type of artwork coming into our studio. Uh, you are currently working with clay. Yes. Mike, yeah. tell us. Tell us a little bit about you and tell us a little bit about the work you're doing. Yeah, so right now, you know, I'm a ceramicist and uh, a poet. You know, those are the two main things I do. And currently at 50 Arrow Gallery in Eastworks in East Hampton, Mass., um, I have an exhibit up called We Are Gardens Haunted by Each Other. And tell us about that. Yeah, so we have the pot sitting in front of us, so that's a representative of the, the, the canvas almost of what we tell the stories for this exhibit on upon. Uh, it's, a, it's a story that actually started in the springtime. I was like, my collaborator, Marcella Haddad, one of my former classmates from the UMass MFA poetry program, we started telling the story to each other. And, we're like, and this was grounded first at a public garden in my hometown of New Bedford, uh, the Haskell Public Gardens. And we were gonna do an event in June and we wanted to have these stories and I was gonna do clay demonstrations. And we started upon this theme and we, we thought it'd be fun to really kind of do like a science fiction kind of fantasy world creation. And what we settled upon was we created this world where something has happened. It, it didn't, we didn't want to explain too much what it was, but, and we were people tending these gardens that had survived through whatever this bad thing had been in the near future. And we were writing letters back and forth to one another. And these letters explain, like, what's growing? What is the soil like now? What are you seeing? What's changed? And it, it was really a blast to, to explore the, let, let our imaginations fly on this. And that evolved from just, like, storytelling to preserving stories of gardens and people's poetry and stories about them on clay. You know, because you think about it. We have these clay shards and clay uh, vessels that have lasted thousands of years. So in a world where things are going uh, topsy-turvy, what better way to preserve yeah. uh, you know, an afternoon where you remember what a tree was like, what a specific flower looked like when it was blooming in your grandmother's yard, what a, what a certain vegetable tasted like in a world where maybe that's changing. And so we were able to... Draw, I was able to draw in a lot more collaborators on, r collaborators on this to share their stories with me. And that's what's going on at 50 Arrow Gallery right now is, you know, I'm there from December 10th. We started last year on December 10th nice. and it runs through February 26th. Amazing. Um, yeah. And so in that entire time, we're filling the space more and more. I'm making more ceramic pieces and I'm encouraging more and more people to come in and tell me their stories because even it's kind of evolved beyond that initial like apocalyptic story. Yeah. Um, to being, we're in a, a time that's changing. We're in a time where the environment is changing rapidly. And so it's a chance to really give these memories of a single moment in time and preserve it, almost like a fossilization on it. You know, you look at some of the pieces in there, and it looks like these fossils of a, of a lost time. And so I just, we just imagine that, you know, paper might not last, but a shard of this pot with a story on yeah, it might be found in a river sometime or in <laughs> a so currently, pile. So currently people are able to go to 50 Arrow yes. Gallery in East Hampton and um, they can make pottery with you or they observe you making pottery. Yeah. How's that process? For the most part, I'm making the pots. Okay. Um, but there's like a component of it where I am working with others because we're still kind of in a storytelling mm -hmm. <laughs> a bit. Like we're, where I'm serving as this potter in this time frame, even though it's more of a set in the real world, we're mm -hmm. still doing a little bit of that imaginary stuff. And so sometimes I'm taking people in to serve as like 
pottery apprentices for this time and we're making flower pots together or making different things and most of it's low fire pottery terracotta pottery uh, earthenware which is mostly what you have in Massachusetts and that's mm -hmm. why nearly everything in that exhibit is a local kind of clay because I wanted to create a thing where you know say something has happened and I find this clay deposit and these pots can be made with just that basic clay it's, it's the typical like flower pot type mm -hmm. of clay that orangey or white uh, clay and with the writing on it we're using liquid clay to write the words upon it and that blocks the smoke when I put them into a, 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 a traditional style like Portuguese style pit firing you know old school methods and so the smoke is sinking into the clay and turning it jet black Whereas that area that's been blocked off by the liquid clay, when you take it out of the firing, I mean. you can wash it away. And right behind it is the unsmoked orange or the unsmoked white. So it stands out really brilliantly against it. Something interesting about that you just mentioned about uh, the source of your clay, you mentioned some of it is local, yeah. locally dug. Yep. Tell, tell me a little bit yeah, about that, there's, that um, experience. There's a lot of clay around here. It's not like the, the stoneware stuff or the porcelain. It's not like the high-end stuff that people consider, uh, tend to want to gravitate towards. It's the, it's the lower fire stuff, which would melt at the temperatures of a porcelain or something like that. I love it. I've always loved terracotta flower pots and things like that. And when I first realized that, you know, the first time I realized we could get it out here was uh, Greenfield was digging a new transportation station uh, for the buses and everything like that. And one of the local potters, Stephen Earp, was like, hey, you know, they dug out a bunch of clay there that you can just take. And I was like, I'm going to do that. And so I took about 300 pounds of this clay. Nice. And it was, it's not great clay to throw. And the clay varies quite a lot from location to location. When they were digging the police station in Northampton, the clay that they dug there, there's another potter whose name I'm forgetting from Northampton who dug that. And he took tons of it out. I got to use some of that, and it was so nice to work with. Nice. But once again, it's terracotta, but it varies very much how, how it works, how it works on the wheel, how, what you can create with it. So that's the exciting part, I think. Nice. You know what I mean? Nice. It's like you never know exactly what you're going to find there. And instead, you know, a lot of times you go into a clay studio now. And this is great because you can get a nicely prepared clay, and if you're learning, you know, it's simple to use. You know it's going to be a particular consistency. But I think the exciting part of digging it yourself is you don't know what the consistency will be. You have to kind of be comfortable working with it, going to it on its own terms, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's like this project. It's kind of like I'm going to people on their own terms to tell me their stories and share it their way. And I'm giving them a clay product that's come to me on its terms. And I'm like, I'm working with you too, man. Yeah, come on, yeah. Clay. <laughs> we're going to ride this wheel and we're going to see what happens. And that's interesting to know about your creative process, yeah. how you take all these elements into consideration that are variables. You don't yeah. know necessarily. Uh, very similar to like a painting. You have a canvas and you know how the canvas works. Yeah. The, paintings consist the paint's consistency might vary from brand to brand. Um, so you kind of work as you go with your creative process. The temperature has to, around you has to do with, a, it yeah. may dry quicker, it may take longer to dry. Um, so those are interesting variables. What is your motivation to create? You know, the clay and words link together for me some, for some reason. Um, I love both processes and, and I do a lot of other arts too, you know. For years I was a journalist and a photographer, like a news photographer and stuff like that. Even though when I ran a little paper, I, I made sure to put a flower photo photograph on the cover every week, uh, which drove some of my publishers nuts. But so the, <laughs> so the sort of floofy stuff I've kind of gravitated to a lot. But that gardeny stuff goes back to my, my roots. You know, my grandfather ran this greenhouse range in very urban New Bedford. So amidst this like kind of concrete area that I grew up in, a uh, little rough area, I had this one and a half acre oasis, you know, to go to where in the middle of winter you walk into this greenhouse and it's blooming with flowers and under the tables is like clover growing wild and there's just that smell of like the dirt that's being sterilized in the back room for new plants to come out. So that is like a, I don't know, and that was demolished when I was around 12 or 13. You know, it was sold out of the family when my grandfather died. And I've talked to my family sometimes. I've been like, I wonder if I'm making flower pots now to to revive that space, yeah, to preserve yeah. it in some way. And I'm like, that's kind of weird, but yeah. you know what? I'm down with it. Nice. Yeah, so I think that's a lot of where, because that was what drew me to clay. I wanted to make flower pots. Yeah. 
And it, I, I have some teachers who are like, aren't you bored out of your mind making those over and over again? And I'm like, nope. But then the element of creativity comes comes in yeah where you are not just making these flower pots but the designs are different yeah um and you're incorporating this element of poetry yeah and storytelling into your pottery making um and i know that that is a very interesting process um would you care to show us uh, I would love to. A, a little bit on how you create you that wanna, process. You want to see this high-tech methodology? I would love to see All that. All right. <laughs> it's called putting goop on a pot and blocking <laughs> smoke with it. So here's my pot. I brought like an example of one. So the whiteness of this clay, this is the white of the clay, but I've already put this through a little bit of smoking just to show the process along the way. This is what it eventually seeps into the clay and it stays. That smoke, unless it's fired again and burned off, that carbon seeps into the pot and it stays that way. Nice. And what I have here is just a little slip pen. It's just got liquid clay in it. So you call liquid clay slip. And what I've been asking people to do is just take one of my pots and think about a story. Think about a moment that they remember in their gardens or in the wilderness or something like that and just tell it to me, you know? And then I want them to write it on the pots. And their handwriting is very important to me. I want it to be in their physical handwriting to go along with their remembered stories and imagined and created stories. Because, you know, I could write that down, but that, I think that would be losing a lot of the that personal touch. That personal the, touch, yeah. that the real quality of a story preserved on the clay through that person transmitted onto the clay. So mm -hmm. it's very basic to write upon it. You know, you got any garden memories? Do you remember any flowers? Um, well, I remember that uh, there's this movie that I liked called The Secret Garden. Yeah. And I watched it when I was a kid so many times. <laughs> but I, I, um, I love that movie. So I kind of feel as if I, uh, I always wanted to, to live in that garden. Yeah, to be in that garden and go in through it <laughs> through this little secret compartment. <laughs> um, I don't know why that always stayed in my head as a movie. So I guess that's a memory okay. I have of gardens. So yes, <laughs> we're watching that movie right now in your head. Yes. What do you remember any particular moments from that secret garden when they walked into that walled garden? Yeah. What do you see? I see a lot of uh, plants, a lot of greenery, high greenery walls, um, creating this kind of. Uh, scenario that's like a maze you know you're running through it almost a little bit lost um, but within the comfort of the greenery so say we start with I see high greenery walls this maze like space and so I'm I'm taking over right now normally I would want you to be writing this, okay, but I think okay. it's a little easier <laughs> while we're doing this for me to nice. scribble away and we would just go on I would give you this pot and you would just write all of that on it so, nice. you know, this would just be the basic blocking right now. You know, any kind of handwriting. Some people write so tiny. Some people fill up the whole pot with big letters. And it's great, you know, yeah. because it shows such variety. And this is just like that opening sentence of what you would write upon this. So nice. you'd write it. You'd give it to me. I'd let it dry a little bit. And then I'd take it home with me and put it into the flames. Nice. Um, and I do it. It's a very gentle firing. Um, I've tried doing it with actual wooden pieces and stuff like that Tr traditional because i do a lot of wood firings like really high fire wood firings yes. uh, at, at various places um but this is different than that this is a very gentle fire because terracotta doesn't like to be shocked by heat <laughs> it'll crack if it gets too hot yeah. so even using small pieces of wood sometimes for this will crack it but if you add leaves slowly and gently, if you add pine needles, which with like the pine resin really makes a beautiful black on it, certain seaweeds with the salt adding their colorations, and it changes so much and it gives such a personal character each piece. And you just slowly add it and slowly add it in and watch the fire burn, let it cool down a little and let smoke really rise up um, and then sink down again and you see the blaze come back up, you keep adding. And slowly, 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 maybe about an hour to two hours of doing that, you'll notice the pots are starting to get nice and jet black. And you have to move around so that the smoke hits the different surfaces. And, and then it's just like I can, you know, you get a sense of when it's ready to take out. And then you just take it to a water source, whether you like pop it into a river, take it to your sink. And I'll wipe away this, this, this lettering, which will have been turned black as well. But it doesn't fire, center onto it. Like if I were to fire this at a higher temperature, that would be a permanent part of the pot. 
Okay. Uh, but now, because it's only a low fire, I can wipe that away and it'll leave that bare white space where those letters really pop right out nice. of this smoked environment that we've created. Nice. So it's really fun. It's amazing how you are able to incorporate what you like to do into a community aspect or a communal aspect where, where there's more than one hand collaborating in yeah. the piece. Um, and that's great. What, what I know that you have your um, studio space, Poesia, uh, yeah, pottery, right? Boise. At the Brushworks Arts and Industry Building. Yep. Yes, and um, and I know that you also do some work with with East Hampton. Yeah. Clay. Yeah, correct? I teach a mindfulness and clay class and some other courses there. And you are exhibiting at Fifty Arrow. What's it like to be an artist that is able to execute their craft, to enjoy their craft? Not a lot of people are able to do this necessarily for a living. Yeah. Um, what has your experience been in that aspect of the creative process? It's terrifying to do it for a living. Yeah. But <laughs> to try to do the art. But I hurled myself into it this past year. I gave myself like about a year and a half to see if I could <laughs> to see if I could shift from the the career I used to have. You know, I was doing a lot of public relations writing for colleges and museums and reporting. And that paid the bills, but writing that way takes a lot of energy and I wanted to see if I could shift that energy to the stuff I really loved. Yeah. And so that's why I went back for the MFA in poetry at UMass Amherst in 2018. And that's why I decided to launch Poesia Pottery in 2021 on my birthday, August 13th. I'm a Friday the 13th child. Nice. So that runs a lot of my uh, <laughs> stuff. Your creations. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like, um, and it's scary, you know, because it's a challenge going from a place where you've got a steady paycheck, you know what's coming in week after week, and as long as you do what's required of you. But this is like a challenge, you know, we're, yeah. we're chasing grants, we chase uh, different exhibitions, we try to find the pieces that, the events and the people who fit well with like our process, yeah. cause like, that's what's wonderful about being in the Valley. And I think having a supportive community is a major part of that. Mm -hmm. You know, like in Western Mass, there's a lot of people doing so many different things. And, and most of them are really friendly about sharing their knowledge. And yeah. that's helped me a lot over yeah. the years. Um, yeah, so that's very dis that's very char characteristic of artists yeah. in this region, yep. in the Pioneer Valley in Western Mass. And it's that, you know, we're all very willing to collaborate with each other, right. inspire each other, share tips with each other, which is uh, goes into contrast with other regions where I've interacted, where people tend to hold yeah. hold back on information or hold back on techniques or, or experiences or connections because um, that's the way things are in other regions. Yeah. But in this region, uh, as you can see, this is why Spotlight on the Arts Big has time. been so successful. Yeah. Because we're able to highlight others' work, feature other artists, share ideas with each other, share with our community, yeah. and achieve the ultimate goal, which is like inspire people and, and motivate them to create. Yeah, because it's cool to create your own thing and have a really wonderful product, wonderful business. But that community is what gives it the life for me. And, it, you know, I have a studio. I share it with uh, the potters, uh, Michael McCarthy and Lucas May, who are very different potters than, in style than what I do. But it's wonderful to see them do something and go, yo, how'd you do that? And, and then we just kind of, and it yeah, sparks sure. a tangent that, like, I'm not necessarily going to do it the way they did, but to see them do something, it's like, wait, I could possibly use that to do this. And I, I think that goes with all of us. Mm. You know, I, I'm, I'm involved with the poetry scenes, the, some of the music scene around here, and I like to incorporate all that. Mm. I feel like the, the different creative vibes just send you off into places that you wouldn't have found yeah. on your own. Like, I, t <laughs> I like kind of give the analogy. I like to walk, walk up Mount Norwatic in Amherst, like this mountain, and I tend to stick to the same path, and I do my little hike, and I go sit at the top on this spot that overlooks the valley, and do my little meditations in the morning. And if I go with somebody different, I always end up going a different way than I normally. I was like, wait, are we, are we supposed to do that way? <laughs> and it shakes me out of my rut. Yeah. And so I think having all these people around shakes us out of our ruts yes. that we might be able to do something and it might work very nicely, but we might find something that's really amazing by having that collaboration. And, and, and the history of art in itself, it's all about influences like yeah. you know one artist influences this other artist this other artist influences another Every artist time. generations influence other generations and that's how we have all these movements pop up like cubism and renaissance and and you know with the, bar the baroque and like all these periods emerge because of the influences that that as artists we have on each other yeah um so who knows what our current 
uh, state will be called in the future. Exactly. Um, uh, but definitely our job is to continue to work with each other yeah. and inspire each other. Yeah, we got to be the weirdos sitting out here making the cool <laughs> stuff that might lead definitely. to a new society. Definitely. Mike, so I know that people can go see you at 50 Arrow Gallery yeah. currently until... So it's through February 26th, and we have open studios during East Hampton Arts Night on... Um, Thursday, February 9th. And shout out to Jason Montgomery Big over time. there. Big time. I'm so appreciative Arrow. of that guy. Uh, yes, he's amazing, and we'll have him on our show as well. But um, he's been gracious to introduce me to you. Yeah, and, I appreciate and, and that and a I lot. I appreciate that introduction. Um, where can, else can people find you? So they can go to my website, poesiapottery.com. They can find me on Instagram at poesiapottery. And I do a lot of events around the area, so I'm popping up. Here and there. All right. <laughs> so we'll, we'll have your um, social media information. Are you on Facebook, Instagram? Yeah, Instagram mostly. Yep. TikTok, Instagram yep. mostly. Um, so we'll definitely have that on our lower third so people can go out there and find you. Um, what does the future hold for Mike? Uh, I have no idea, but I, I kind of walk the path towards it. You know, this spring we're doing a uh, public art installation that we, we received a grant from the New England Foundation for the Arts, the first public arts grants that they're passing out. Nice. So I'm going back to my hometown and we're gonna be building a sculpture, a uh, brick and tile sculpture and mural sculpture. I'm collaborating with the artist, uh, Johanna Hogendijk, who lives nice. in Florence. And she's gonna be painting these marvelous murals because she does mostly uh, representative imagery of, of a woman that she knows, and we're gonna be taking that to the Cove Walk in New Bedford. Okay. So it's like where the Hurricane Dyke was to protect the, the harbor. That's a big thing, that's gonna take the spring. It's really exciting to think about what we might do with that space. Nice, nice. That's amazing. Um, again, like being able to, to, to bring your work to different regions and work with different artists, and that's what's beautiful about right? what we do. It's that's exciting. Yeah, it definitely <laughs> is exciting. So Mike, I wanna thank you for being in our show. I wanna thank you for sharing your knowledge. I would love to um, uh, continue uh, the collaboration and, con and, and con see what we can you gotta finish continue this to do. <laughs> yeah, let's see what this is. We gotta power. secret gardenize this pot. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Well, I wanna thank you. Thanks and, I, um, and I hope that your um, work at the gallery continues to be a, su a success. Oh, thank you. And I can't wait to see what you uh, come up with over the summer with this mural project Me in too. New Bedford. <laughs> so thank you once again. And I hope that you, our audience, have enjoyed meeting Mike as much as I have. Please look him up on social media. Please visit him at 50 Arrow Gallery in East Hampton. I've enjoyed meeting you. Um, and our audience, I will see you next time.